A key ruling and then a key witness highlight the first day of testimony at the civil trial against an Austin police officer. Officer Nathan Wagner took the stand and told his version of the story from the night he fired five shots into a vehicle. Those shots killed Byron Carter, who was not the intended target. KXAN's Chris Sadegi is live from the federal courthouse in downtown Austin with more from today's testimony. Chris. Leslie, everything happened in about two and a half seconds, according to Wagner, who said he was surprised to see the two men in the car and that he knew it was going to be a deadly force situation when that car came towards him and his partner. Now, two different oversight reviews disagree. They say that that was excessive force to fire into the car, but those reviews will not be heard by the jury. Police monitor Margot Frazier testified Monday about how her review and the citizens panel review conduct their oversight. But Tuesday, the judge ruled their methodologies were flawed and would not allow them in as evidence. Why did they create the panel? What was the purpose of the panel? Why did the city create it and then belittle it in the same breath? The ruling frustrated the Carter family, but Judge Lee Yackel agreed with Monday's testimony from Mark Ott and Chief Art Acevedo that the oversight is not an official investigation and does not have access to all the facts and witnesses. The qualifications of panel members to make such opinions were also an issue. If they're going to have one, why don't they get somebody that they feel is qualified? to make, you know, the decisions that they made. After the ruling, Officer Nathan Wagner was the first to testify. He said he felt his partner was in danger when the engine roared and the car came towards them. And although the target was the driver, he was not able to get the ideal position to shoot accurately and someone other than his target was hit. And in the opening arguments, the Carter family attorney, Adam Lowy, said that losing a child is the worst pain any parent can go through. And because of the reckless actions of a government employee, they're asking for a judgment of one and a half million dollars. Now, on the other side, Wagner's attorney said that Lee Webb, the driver of the car, will testify that Carter yelled, go when he saw the officers that night. Leslie, back to you. Well, Chris, one of the allegations here was that Officer Wagner and his partner profiled those men when they chose to go after them. Did he testify to that at all today? Yes, Wagner did say that the reason they followed the men initially was because they were running a spotter operation in an area that had high crime and that the men were looking all around real quickly and that's what made them suspicious. But he said they actually lost sight of them and were just looking to see if any cars had been burglarized when they came across the two men and were surprised to find them in that car. He did say that race had nothing to do with his opinion that they were suspicious. All right, Chris Sadegi, live downtown. Thanks, Chris, for following that for us. Looking in depth, we wanted to know if this move was ever part of the vision for the police monitor's office when it was created years ago. But even when they make a decision, the police chief has the option to override that report. Longtime community members have a different view and say the system might just need a reboot. Tonight at 6, we explain why the police monitor's office exists and the limitations it has when dealing with matters between the police and community.